Today I have Emma in the kitchen with me and we're making Emma's favorite bread, which is a fresh milled whole wheat sourdough. So watch along as we make this whole wheat sourdough. First thing we're gonna do is we're going to grind our wheat berries. You never seen the wheat berry, this is wheat berries. So do you wanna put it in here and grind it, Kim? Let's close the lid. Well, I can tell from the sound that it finished grinding everything. And I peeked in there just to make sure. And what we have is fresh ground whole wheat flour. So now we're gonna take this, measure it out, we'll add some water, do an auto lease, and then we'll start baking. Sound good, kiddo? Mm -hmm. All right. All right, so let's go ahead and make our auto lease. You wanna get this mixed up? So what an auto lease is, is I do it a lot of times if there's a whole wheat flour and it's high in whole wheat flour. Um, whole wheat has a lot of other stuff in it. You have the germ and the bran. The auto lease helps to get it moist ahead of time before we add the rest of our stuff and develop our glutens. That way uh, the bread will wind up more tender and it ends up more soft. You can do it without it, but you're gonna have more trouble. And when you go to uh, mix it all up and knead it to try to develop the glutens. It'll just take a little bit more time. Okay, so it should be good. We'll just get it um, a little bit of time to rest and we'll see you guys when it's time to add the salt and add the starter. I think I might have misspoke before and said mix for 30 minutes. We actually just mix it until the water and the flour is combined. We run to let it rest for 30 minutes so the water can absorb into it. Uh, now that that's happened, we're going to add our uh, ripe starter and we're going to add the salt. I'm going to go ahead and do that in a bit. And we're making uh, two loaves and we're going to have a total of um, 1,000 grams of flour. And we're adding in, where have my recipe? 340 grams of ripe starter. So if you remember, we added in the 380 grams of flour. Well, our starter is half and half. Half water, half... Yes, that's what it says. Um, our flour, our starter is half water, half uh, flour. So we have 170 grams of flour in there, 170 grams of water. So adding in flour, that gets us to 1,000 grams. And we're looking for about a 78% uh, absorption ratio. I'm going to get that mixed together. We're going to mix it until it passes the window pane test. And then we can show you the window pane test. To do the window pane test, first you have to oil your fingers. But you have to use more oil with sourdough bread because sourdough bread is really sticky. And you kind of just rub it in to your hands. And you have to be really gentle to grab the bread like you're trying to make a bubble with slime. You kind of just lift it up and let it get thinner and thinner and thinner and it shouldn't rip. And that's how you do the window pane test. Good job, kiddo. Yep. So the window pane test, we're checking to see if the gluten is developed. And with whole wheat, you're gonna get a little more ripping than you would um, just a regular white flour dough. But you can see Emma pulled it up very gently and it got very, very thin before it started to kind of tear on the sides. And that tells us that the glutens are very developed. I didn't say it when we finished the window um, test, but you want to let your bread dough rise three to four hours after that until it doubles. So Emma and I are back and the bread dough has risen and it's a lot bigger. We're going to turn this dough out. We're going to knock the air out of it, knock it back, 
And then we are going to flour our Benetton baskets, shape our loaves, and turn it into the oven. So, get our dough out. <coughs> and I will just give it a quick knead to knock some air back out of it. Put that between us, kiddo, so you can have some flour too. And we'll divide it about in half. Okay, we flour our baskets so they'll be ready. And you want to flour your basket really heavy because this dough is kind of sticky and it has a tendency to really stick pretty badly. And we'll throw a little flour down just to make sure that doesn't stick. And then when I shape my loaf, pull it in front of me and I'm going to pull my ends over because you want the top of it to be stretched really tight. Um, that tight top is what's going to uh, help the dough when it rises up to create those nice big air bubbles. So, so I'll get a little flour and put it on the top. And I will gently set it down in there. And we'll cover this with some plastic wrap while it rises again, and we'll let it rise for 30 or 45 minutes, and we'll put it into the oven. All right, it's been 30 minutes, um, and the bread has already started to rise a little bit, so it's time to put it out on a piece of parchment paper, and score the top, and put it in the oven. So, cover it like this. And I'll gently turn it out. There you go, kiddo. Perfect. And score the top. Um, let's drag this across it lightly. If you want to see a better video or see this up close, I have a video of baking bread. And on that one, I show it a little bit more in detail. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. I'll get this in the oven. This is why you want it to be preheated. This will be nice and hot when we put it in there. Okay, pop this in the oven. I'll set the timer for 25 minutes. And in 25 minutes, I'll remove the lid and then we'll let it go for another 15. And that should be it. That's our timer. So it's time to take the lids off and set it for another 15 minutes and these will be done. So first chance to see what these are going to look like. Oh. All right, I'll set it for another 15 minutes and then these will be ready. That's the timer. So it's time to take the bread out of the oven. Yay. I will turn this off. Let's pull it out. Here's yours, kiddo. Mm -hmm. 
Here's this one. The paper looks like burnt toast. It is. The paper got a little burnt in the oven. That's what happens. I didn't know paper so. could get burnt. Those are hot. Take this off and put on a cooling rack. We'll let it sit for a little bit. And then when it cools down completely, we'll slice it. Well, those are cooled and we sliced them. And you can see um, have some air pockets in there. And you did a great job, kiddo. Yay. Very proud of you. You want to try it? Yes. If you notice, we actually have the exact same dough. Um, you can let our kiddo and try it. Okay. Um, we had the exact same dough. The only difference was was how Emma and I shaped it. And that was something that plagued me a very long time. I tried and tried and all my bread landed out flat. It wasn't until I shaped it and figured out a little bit more on the shaping that I could get it to kind of make a nice ball. So even if you make your dough perfect and you're wondering what's wrong, it might be the shaping. You want to give that a try? Sure. Mm. Yay. <laughs> You're a great kiddo. I could not cook like that at 13. <laughs>